most artists in the history of the world were not drug addicts. They were usually God addicts. Look at the greatest art in history. You'll find most of them were super religious people who literally saw God in their living room and then took the power of God and that was transmitted through the paintbrush or through that piece of marble. How could a man like Rodin take a piece of inert stone and inside that stone see the essence of a human form and sculpt from that block of inert stone of marble the portrait of a human being that looks so real? A hundred years later, I go and look at them in the museum and literally inside that carved eye, I can see the person. How is that possible? How? It's a different show than I've ever done in my 21 years because each day to me, I must tell you, I see as my last day, my last day on earth. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. I didn't know that that had been put on YouTube. I found it on my Facebook account today. Apparently, a gentleman named Michael Sestak heard my show, extracted that from it, put music to it and posted it on YouTube and I'm going to put it up on my my own Facebook account as a, as a piece because a lot of people are freaking out how good it was and I just got an email from a man I really like he's a friend of mine Brian Sussman from KSFO fills in for me from time to time and he says you you need to repost that on Facebook and YouTube moving inspirational be well and God bless you pulled off the road to send this and I got to tell you something I had not heard it I didn't rehearse it to play it and send it blah 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 but someone posted, I figured, well, let's give it a shot. It's inspirational, and I want to get off the topic of politics for a minute. And truthfully, I realize now, I remember when I did it, I was talking about inspiration, and I found the transcript of it in a, the, the dog book I'm doing. That will be part of my dog book. It's a long part of, but it's not set to music. And it started with my voice and my ability to move crowds as my gift, but also my burden. This power of the magical voice, etc. And I go on to inspiration. And I say, I don't feel that I'm inspiring people in the way I want to inspire them. And I, I spend a number of words, and boy, someone can take these words and do things like that. It's amazing, the power of uh, production. It just shows you production values. If you know what to edit and how to put it together and how to set it to music, it's amazing. My suspicion is this will outlast a lot of the other work I've ever done. This inspirational message could last an awful long time because it moved me, and I didn't even know I had done it. Karen on WBOB, go ahead, please. What's on your mind? Dr. Savage, that was so inspirational. I just can't tell you. This week, this just rounds out the week for me. I started out Monday morning praying for you specifically. I was praying for wisdom for you, Dr. Savage. And I just felt a burden, and I kept praying for wisdom every day this week. And somehow I missed that monologue. But I want to tell you a really quick story that makes us all one big circle. Because during the week, I was so depressed over all the political turmoil and what's going on in our country. I, I read a scripture that talked about hope, and it gave me hope. And in the meantime, I sent a Christmas card to someone I met in Montana. I live in Virginia. I met someone Karen, in Montana. I, I have, I have to, Karen, I have to interject. Now, I don't mean to cut you off, but I have almost no time in this segment, and I want to summarize what you're saying and what I'm saying. First of all, God bless you, and thank you for listening to the show and hearing my message, and I'm sending you a Christmas gift of my book, Government Zero, absolutely free. It's my gift to you. But I have to expound a little bit on this for a moment, on inspiration. Well, these are the darkest times I've ever lived through. I am totally and absolutely depressed, not for personal reasons, but for political reasons. I have never been burdened with a heavier weight than I am living under the iron boot of Barack and St. Obama. I have never seen anything like this. The effect upon me is overwhelming. And I'm the kind of man who generally creates out of despair. I create from the point of despair. I create from depression. I create from darkness. I don't reach for a pill because I don't have any. I reach deep into the well of my soul. 
because it seems to be bottomless. It is the Savage Nation. We're talking about a lot of different things. If you just tuned in, I can't repeat all of it every time we come back. Um, but I have an announcement to make. It's not a pleasant announcement for those of you in two markets. It's going to be very disappointing for those of you in Dallas and those of you in Albuquerque, but I have no control over this. In Albuquerque, I'm being taken off KKOB radio and being moved to KTBL. I think that starts on Monday. And in Dallas, which I've come to love for no reason, I cannot understand my ratings are sky high. Uh, they just moved me to a third hour a few months ago, but for reasons only the geniuses high up in the clouds can understand, I'm being moved off KWBAP uh, in Dallas. You'll have to find me on KLIF, which will be 570 on the dial. So I'll still be in Dallas, but it's a different signal, and I will still be in Albuquerque on a different signal for reasons that make no sense to me whatsoever. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. That's the way the ball bounces. And for those of you who uh, still want to find the show, I'm sure you will. So tell your friends. WABC, Nick, welcome to the Savage Nation. Uh, I would first like to comment on the art uh, what you discussed. The they're, they're uh, they continued discrediting of American culture by degrading all forms of artistic expression. This was a communist goal a long time ago, and it was written in 1960. They want to eliminate all good sculpture from parks, buildings, and pictures, substitute shapeless, awkward, and meaningless forms. And, and apropos of that, your monologue brought tears to my eyes because it shows that there's nothing like hope. And when you bring up the Lord, and the Lord of the whether it's a Judeo Christian uh, principles, you inspire people to continue not to listen to you, but to inspire them and know there is hope. And there are those many of us out there fighting for what is right and just. God bless you. As a chapter, all I can say is God bless you. Nick, I don't have any answer to your comments. You know, I would be revising my own comments to comment on your comments. I'm glad that you heard it. I'm glad that it inspires you to keep going. I'm glad you see the degradation of our society for what it is, and you're not fooled by the snake in the White House, nor his perverted minions, who have ruined virtually every aspect of this great society. They have destroyed, no different than ISIS knocking down the great temples of Palmyra. Obama and his Red Guards have taken a hammer, sledgehammers to virtually every aspect of our great society. I stand by those words. And they have another year left to dismember everything that's left. That's the frightening part, because we know now, after yesterday, seeing the shameful nature of this Paul Ryan, this quizzling Paul Ryan, the beard for Obama, that there's nothing to stop the steamrolling of our society. Okay, Chaplain, Nick, sending you a copy of Government Zero. Maybe you'll enjoy that for the Christmas holidays. So I get why... Why do people get depressed around the holidays? Because they do. You may not know this. You know, this is kind of well-known in the psychiatric circles, in psychiatric, in therapy circles. People get very depressed around the holidays. And no one wants to talk about it because you think everyone else is happy. You see the other woman in your neighborhood rushing off in her Volvo or whatever they're driving today. I don't know. They're not even driving Volvos. Who know what the car of choice is? If it's... Uh, one neighborhood, it's the Saab. If it's another neighborhood, it's the Mercedes. If it's another neighborhood, it's the Jeep. I don't know what it is. But you see the other woman, the other soccer mom, if you want to call her that. I don't even think that's a phrase that works anymore. And she looks happy. She's busier than a beaver, picking up the cute little kids. And you seem to be anguished inside. There's something wrong. You don't feel good. You feel depressed. You feel harried. You just It's not right. Just It doesn't feel right. But you gotta, you know, put a big smile on and keep going. Be a big old, you know, keep trucking along there. And you think you're the only one who gets depressed around the holidays. It's actually a national epidemic. And you ask therapists, <laughs> they're probably busier this week than they are the rest of the year. Why? Why do people get depressed around the Christmas holidays? Oh, there are so many reasons. I can enumerate some of them. One is that you don't have the, the happiness that you thought you would have. You waited for all year and you just, you don't feel any different. In fact, you feel worse. You have less time for yourself. Maybe you have less money than you thought you'd have and you can't buy that present for Aunt Minnie or whatever. You can't get the kids the clothing that you wanted to get them. 
You can't buy yourself anything. You have nothing left for yourself. Those are the things that on a material level would make you unhappy, but that's not what I'm talking about because it's fundamentally different than that. It's not even about money because I've seen people very happy with almost no money. And, of course, the opposite is true. It doesn't mean that, you know, my mother used to joke even though we were poor. She used to joke her old jokes. She always had her little jokes. Rich or poor, it's good to have money. I mean, it didn't mean anything, but it made me laugh. What do you mean, Ma? Rich or poor, it's good to have money. Okay, she made a point. Yeah, even if you're rich, it's good to have money. And if you're poor, it's good to have money. Right, but it's not the answer. We know money can't buy happiness. We know all of that. Or as the Beatles said, can't buy me love. So is it love that's missing? Well, in America today, there's less brotherly love than ever in history. I've never seen anything like this. I certainly wasn't around to live through the Civil War, but I imagine during the Civil War there was this much hatred as promoted by this fiend. The man, I think I finally found the right word. It's not snake. It's not thin smoker. He's a pure fiend. The man is fiendish in virtually everything he undertakes. The man is so deceitful it frightens people who actually know what he's saying. He lets the jihadists get away with the murder they committed by not permitting those in the intelligence community to monitor social me messages. And the fiend gives a speech today before dashing off on his vacation, telling us that he did that because he had legitimate concerns for their privacy. You hear this? Then the fiend says he's going to release people from Guantanamo because it's become a recruitment center for, uh, for the jihadists. He could just shoot those in Guantanamo because we know that they're the worst of the worst. Just hang them. Shoot them in a firing squad and send the message out there. If that's how we, that's the American way. We're going to shoot you if we catch you committing terrorism. He could do that and then close Guantanamo. I have no problem with that. Why pump any money into the, into the dictator's economy? But, okay, but that's not the reason. It's not politics. Although there is an element of political dissent that is causing a lot of depression. But beyond that, people get depressed in the hol during holiday times. And it, it has to do with the expectations. It has to do with the forced family get-togethers. It has to do with the fear that you're going to fail at the family get gathering. You have the, the fears that you're going to get together and not really feel good about your family. They're not going to feel good about you. You know it's true. Robert, am I wrong about this? Or am I just an old codger who sees things this way? No, I don't know. I, I, that's my viewpoint. I mean, I was younger at a certain point in my life, obviously. I felt the same way when I was younger. The holidays are very difficult on a person's emotions. And then you have the normal uh, issues of the SAD, the, uh, the, the light situation. I think they should get rid of daylight saving time. I mean, I used to like that it got dark at 4.30 when I was a boy in the Bronx. Why? Because my mother put me to sleep and said it was nighttime. I didn't know. She didn't like this energetic little boy. She wanted him to go to sleep because I was causing trouble by being too alive. All right, that was our problem. That was her problem to turn me into a little uh, sleeper. I sleep an awful lot now. In fact, one of my survival techniques, my entire life, I have used sleep as therapy for my entire life ever since I've been 20 years old. I never talked about it. I spent a lot of time in bed, An a lot of time in bed. I'm glad to see that uh, Mao Zedong conducted a lot of his business in bed. In fact, he would often not leave his bed. I read that he summoned ministers to his bedroom at 4.30 in the morning or 3.30 and conducted national business while in bed. Okay, now that's a funny statement if you've been following the Mao Zedong speech that I gave you earlier. But the fact is, bed is not a bad place. Uh, Winston Churchill used his bed very well, by the way, and his bathtub. So don't underestimate the power of rest, total rest, total sleep. It's probably the greatest cure there is for all of the jitters of the holiday season and the other techniques that we know work. But it's really a spiritual issue, isn't it, around the holidays? What is it that people get agitated about the holidays? For example, let's, say, let's take the Jewish holiday of Hanukkah. It's a child's holiday. It was not a biblical holiday. It's not even in the Bible. It was an invention, like all religions have invented holidays. Christmas is an invention, for example, of the, the Christian religion that has no validity in historical, no, no basis in historical reality, because nobody knows the actual birth date of Jesus. I mean, I've studied this. Don't get mad at me. All educated Christians know that December 25th was an invented date. And it was invented, by the way, by the church fathers, I believe, in the 10th or 11th century, when a Persian religion was sweeping the world and threatened to take over the whole Christian world. I forget the per uh, Mithraism. It was the Mithras. Mithraism. All right. I remember my theology. The Mithraism was threatening to overtake Christianity as the most popular religion of its time. And so the church fathers went into the marketing mode 
and they said we got to match those guys. 